Welcome back to another episode on Keyho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we explore cloud gaming and what it is today to a normal consumer like myself and also you. I never really was interested in cloud gaming due to needing fast internet service and pretty much not believing in any of the current services would be able to handle the strain. Playing online with all the hiccups that I have also put an idea to rest, although I do love playing online games with my friends still. While exploring the game store on Nintendo Switch, I noticed that they offered some games to play that I thought were no way possible to be on the system due to being very advanced in tech and hardware. I then saw that it was playable only through the cloud. I felt that this was a smart move on Nintendo to be able to play games not possible on a Switch but possible through streaming and the game like similar to Stadia, Game Pass, and GeForce Now. Essentially, like a Netflix of gaming at home sooner than we thought possible. But the biggest con is, is it ready? Last I played a cloud game on Stadia about a year and a half ago, wondered if anything really changed as time has passed on. Here is a look at some of the popular cloud gaming available and which one would I pick. Being very intrigued, I wanted to take a look at Nintendo Switch that always seemed to impress. I love the idea of what they are doing, but was very scared when I saw that the company called Ubitus, who specialized in the technology to bring cloud gaming home, was picked to do the ports of the games instead of Nintendo themselves. Taking a quick look at what Nintendo Switch had to offer, they gave games like Control, Hitman 3, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Kingdom Hearts 3. The biggest issue here is probably the system itself, where the Switch is not as powerful as, say, my PC. The bandwidth is the same, just the hardware is different in doing these tests. My PC runs all the other cloud streaming experiences and performs much better where the Switch stutters in audio and visual consistently in all the games I tried except for control on performance mode. On quality, I say don't even try it. Performance mode ran more smoothly and the gameplay was more adaptable and playable. The game does have some lag here and there, but way better than I initially thought it may turn out to be. On behalf of His Royal Highness Omar al-Ghazali, I bid you welcome to the Sector. besides the miscues in performance, is the games look very, very soft, especially in the visuals department, which is expected, but not to this degree. Even colorful Kingdom Hearts loses its bit of its crispness look to its counterparts, especially when you play there on PC. Game Pass from Microsoft was the next step up, and it runs very well in performance in all the games I tested. They do have artifacts on screen here and there as this game streams, but for the most part at 20, 1080p scale and much more crisp and smooth as a console original. Easy to play and anything you own with the must own subscription to play cloud gaming is fant a fantastic deal. Where Nintendo still charges almost full price, Game Pass acts like Netflix and will play quickly and instantly. <laughs> Your beast thinks with its stomach, as usual. Well, there's something you both have in common. <laughs> That's harsh. Go on, boy. You'll find a break. I shall organize a hunt. 
Go and find your mother. Tell her I must speak with her. She's probably... Looking after Hugo. Yes, of course. Amicia. He was a good dog. As for Stadia, I know that Google has all but abandoned them. I feel that the tech and streaming has come a long way and does a really good job in streaming games with a very crisp visual that rivals and looks better than the Game Pass hands down. Of course, they have been on the market the longest without beta testing. The gameplay is smooth and responsive. I was more impressed with Stadia at this moment than Game Pass and that really surprised me. Of course, Stadia lacks one major issue where their subscription plan isn't the best and they charge, like Nintendo, way too much for their games that are much cheaper on other consoles. Although pretty much a failure at this point, I'm still impressed with the results given the games I played. Done in this stuff zone. You should move to the next one. Two, one, two, one, two. Don't bother with setbacks right now. Keep looking ahead. The final look is at GeForce Now, okay. where they took linked games from Epic Store, Ubisoft, and Steam, and other games on PC that you own, and being played at 1080p at Ultra Settings for an hour at a time on their free account. Of course, you can pay more to play longer. Having an only an hour though can take a lot of data, as it uh, costs about 10 gigabytes of data. GeForce Now has done the best and I've seen in cloud gaming, but it is at a cost. The games are done so well that you feel as if this was an actual game if you were playing it on console or PC at home. Very well done in my book, but it will cost you to play longer at a higher data rate than others. Bring it, cocksuckers! Cut me a rat! Come on, motherfucker! Overall, I feel that the best technology and performance goes to GeForce Now. The best plan and subscription and games to offer goes to Game Pass, with Nintendo at the bottom of the barrel in performance and cost. Stadia gets a nice try award for doing a very good job, but with no games to play, they have proven that this system does not work well when compared to Game Pass. I do wish that all companies could share their tech together to push the limits and create a better version of the game to be streamed online means the world for consoles might no longer exist, but gaming can be done everywhere and anywhere, period. That's it for this look at cloud gaming for the average consumer. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload.
Damn.